This video is going to be the first in a series of three and it's going to be how you can go ahead and create a forms library within a Microsoft Dynamics portal. So the forms library, the forms that we're actually going to be looking at is forms that will be generated from Forms Pro. So those are the, the elements of it. It's going to be Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement, a Microsoft Dynamics portal, and then also Forms Pro. But hopefully it gives you an idea of some of the things that you could do with Forms Pro um, and maybe create a portal using something else. But let's walk through the steps. So the first thing, let's just go ahead and have a look at what I'm talking about. So we're logged into a portal here. Uh, Jane Doe is logged in. Jane works for Doe's Dynamics Distributors. And what we're seeing here is all of the forms that related to that specific account. So if we have a couple of contacts there, they log in, they'll be able to see the same thing. And so somebody can go in and actually complete the forms. So we've got forms to complete. And then below we have forms that are completed. So first of all, if I go ahead and click on the link to one of the forms, we're going to get it open up into a unique link for uh, Doe's Dynamics Distributors and we have a form, very original. We've got uh, a few questions. We're just going to go ahead and fill those out and we're going to go ahead and submit them. So this is just to kind of show you how we've got a link to a form. We click on the link to the form and then um, when that form response is, is received, what, what are we actually then going to do with it? So let me go ahead and close that. Um, so we can see there, that's the one that I clicked on. That's one that was completed previously on the 13th of October. Let me go ahead and refresh. I'll give that a, a, a moment so we can see there we've actually got a message that says, once you've completed a form, please wait a few moments before refreshing this page. The view below will then update to show your remaining forms to complete. So what's happening is there's a flow that is running in the background. So now we can see that that's actually updated it. This is no longer a link. I can't get back to it. And then we've got the date that it's been completed. All right, so let's have a look at the elements that you would need to adjust or modify or customize within Dynamics so that we can start on this process. So the first thing we're going to go into make.powerups.com. I have a solution for my customer forms configuration and that I, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding in a new entity called form request. So let me just go ahead and look at my custom fields. So here are the fields that I have created and then the type of field as well. So we have um, a completed on. We can ignore completed by them at, for, for this um, purpose. This is not going to be um, updating who completed it. We're just going to see when it was completed, the date. Um, we're going to have form details, which will be a text field. We'll have form ID, which is going to be an auto number generator. Now, if you have never um, done this before, there is a tool in the XRM um, toolbox that will allow you to do this. There will be a link and more information in the YouTube description below. So go ahead and look for that so you can see how to do it. Um, then we've also got a URL, which is going to be your, your text URL field, and that's a form link. We have the form name and we have then regarding and we also have a survey response. Now, regarding is going to be a lookup to an account and the survey response is a lookup to a Forms Pro survey response record. OK, so those are the things that we that we need to do. OK, so let's go ahead now and look further along. Um, so we don't have anything else that we've set up differently in terms of relationships, no business rules. Um, with the views, we uh, can look in here and, and we can set things like, let's see all form requests that have been maybe um, cancelled, completed, or that need completing. So that's up to you in terms of what you might want to display to the user within Dynamics, not the person that is logged into um, the portal, because we're going to be doing things slightly differently for that. Let's go ahead and look at the settings also for the entity. So the important thing, if we look at, let's see which one it is, there we go. So what we also need is on the entity, we need to make sure that this is ticked where it says enable change tracking for flow. So what this means is um, if, if you've ever used the portal before, you know that historically caching was a huge issue in terms of you could make um, changes to a, to a record in the portal and it would take, uh, sorry, in uh, Dynamics and it would take forever for it to be updated in the portal. 
So if we basically have this ticked, then that will be uh, force things to be refreshed or displayed to, to people a little bit faster. So we want to make sure that that is ticked as well. Okay, so let's go out of this. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into our Dynamics 365 Portals app and we're going to go ahead and look at a couple of things that we need to set up for the portal. So the first thing is we need to give permission um, to the form request entity and what we're going to be displaying in the portal. So our entity permission is going to be set on the scope of the account for the new form request entity that we've created. So we can see here account scope, that is the regarding field that I said we, we are creating. And the only thing we're going to do is give read privileges and that is it. So very, very straightforward for that one. All right, so now what we're going to do is look at content snippets. And let's just go ahead and search. There we go. So I have created five content snippets. Now, the content snippets, what we're using these for is within the portal. If I just click back on the portal, see these columns here form ref, form details, date requested, same thing again here, but this is date completed. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to create a web template which will display this in a specific way. And the content snippets we're going to be adding and all we're doing there is putting in what we want the name of the column headers to be, because we're going to do this slightly differently. We're not actually going to be doing entity lists in the typical sense. So. I've added five and I've basically called them forms forward slash grid header forward slash and then whatever I'm going to be calling it and then we've got the value so the value is what do I want the header to be so we're going to be adding these five content snippets then if I go I've got a web page so if I go to my forms library so my web page all I'm putting on here Let's just go into the um, content of that page. And I'm using a little bit of liquid and if you want to uh, see what it is and look at the related blog post, then you can copy and paste the code from there. But if we can see here, it's basically, if a user's logged in, we're going to get the account name and then we're going to say, please see all of the forms related to your account and then it will display the account name and then it will end. So right here, please see all of the forms related to your account and then it's displaying the account name. Don't have to do this, but it's just kind of a, a bit of a bit of reference. So it shows the person logged in. Yes, I'm looking at the forms for my specific account. All right, so if we just go back here. Okay, so if I look at the information about the web page, you can see there that we've got the page template and we've got the web page. Now the page template is something that's kind of left over from ADX Studio Days. Um, so we need to have that as kind of like a, a middle piece between the web, um, the web page, the web template and the page template. So it's a little bit confusing, but if I go into the page template, we'll see here that we've got forms library. That's all that's on there. And we're basically then linked to the web template of forms. So I'm going to go into that. Okay. Now this, you're going to see a link within the description below for the, for this YouTube video that is going to link you to an uh, awesome, um, web page or a, an awesome blog post by Nick Dolman, who is also a fellow MVP and it was his blog post that gave me the information that I needed on how to actually create what I wanted to do in terms of the layout of showing two different sections here um, and being able to use a hyperlink that would link directly to the forms pro survey that we wanted someone to complete. So I'm not going to explain how to do this because I'm going to send some traffic over to Nick's page because I think that is what you need to be reading because he's explained it amazingly well. So I'm just going to talk through what this is actually doing, but in terms of actually creating it, if you want to understand further, then please read, read his post. Also in my blog post about this, you will be able to access this code itself in GitHub if you wanted to and just use this. All right. So what this is doing is first of all, it's basically including the page copy. So we looked at the web page just before. That's where I showed you the liquid that would, um, 
essentially display this up here. So it basically pulls that in first. If you've got something on the web page, um, then it would pull that first. Then what we're doing is we're using fetch XML and the first fetch is basically forms to complete and I'm using fetch that will basically say okay well what's the entity what attributes do we want to display and then what is the condition for this or so what's the filtering and I'm basically saying that the status code basically is um, needs to be completed or um, needs completing um, whatever you have called your status so I'm basically pulling in any of those um, uh, fields, or oh, sorry, any of those form request records that need to be completed. All right, so then what I'm doing is I am basically um, doing those that are already completed, so those that have a status of completed, and again I'm saying which which fields do I want to actually display. Then what I'm doing is I'm, I'm saying if the number of forms to complete is greater than zero, Let's add in a header of forms to complete and a bit of text that says once you've completed a form, please wait a few moments, blah, 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 blah. So that is this part right here. We're basically saying if this is more than two, uh, sorry, more than zero, then let's go ahead and display them. If it's not, you won't even see any of this part right here. Okay. So then what we're doing is we are using HTML to basically set up a table to display those. So we here is where we can see those content snippets and we're pulling in those headers at the start of the table. Then what we're doing is we are saying, well, let's then show the date field and let's put it in a specific format. Then what we're doing is we're showing the link, um, sorry, we're using the link to the form and we are then using sorry, we're, so we're doing a link to the form, but what we're doing is we're using the form name as the pretty um, link, if that makes sense. So rather than displaying the long URL that we have here, which looks a little bit ugly, we're making it pretty by using the name of the form, that's the hyperlink. Okay, and then what we're doing is we're saying if there are um, more than zero in terms of the forms that are completed, then let's go ahead and do the same thing again, create a table, use the headers and set that, that up. And then we're basically stopping, stopping that. So that is uh, the web template that is being used and that is how we can display these two entity lists essentially. We can display them one on top of each other, but we can decide if if and when we want to dis display them. So if we don't even have any forms generated, there won't be anything. Um, if we don't have any completed, there won't be anything that will show at the bottom here. And if we don't have any left to complete, we won't see the top part either. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This is the first part. So the first part is you would you'd need to go ahead, add your entity. You then need to go ahead and set up your entity permission for that entity create your content snippets that will be used for the headers on these tables right here. Then you need to be creating your um, essentially your web page, page template and uh, web template. So typically you're going to create the web template first, link it to the page template and then use your web page and then link that to the page template. So let me know if you have any questions look in the description definitely because there's going to be a lot of links and reference information that you're going to need for this and hopefully this gets you on your way to starting off how to create um, this in the portal and over the next couple of videos you'll be able to see how to create the flows that will actually go ahead and generate these forms for the customer to fill out. Hi I'm Megan Walker thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it if you don't want to miss out on any other content you can go ahead and Click on my face below to subscribe and if you want to watch the next video you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.